The NBA trade deadline has come and gone, and unless there are any trickling deals that come through in the next few minutes, the Bulls have once again, for the third straight deadline, stood pat, doing absolutely nothing. Now, I'll admit, after the injury to Zach Levine and him being out for the season, I had very, very low expectations of the Bulls going into the deadline and fully expecting them to not make any moves. But even despite the low expectations, for some reason, as a Bulls fan, you always end up walking away from the deadline in disbelief. And I think a lot of that is because you see all of the things these other teams are doing, all the moves that they're making, making big swings, either pushing all in to really solidify themselves as a contender or accepting they need to reboot and go in another direction by acquiring draft picks and young players. Like when you see a team like the Charlotte Hornets, arguably one of the worst run organizations in the NBA, when you see them making smart moves and the Bulls are sitting there twiddling their thumbs, you can't help but throw your hands up in the air. The Knicks got better, a lot better. You could argue they won the trade deadline with all the moves they made going back to the OG and Anobi trade that happened a few weeks ago. The Pacers got better. You could even argue the Raptors got better. The Sixers got better in adding Buddy Heald. Hell, the Pistons got better for the future by selling off their older veterans for draft compensation. I just, I just don't get it. I don't get how this front office can sit here and justify to themselves that this is okay. That what they see before them in this roster is good enough. And it would be one thing if this was the first season or the first iteration of this group, but this is the third season now of this team, the third season of this core. We know what this group is. They're not suddenly gonna magically turn a corner and become a contender. They're an average team that is at best a play-in team and a first round exit, that's it. By the way, and I know this is a terrible transition, but I've got my commitments uh, I have to fulfill. I'm not a football guy by any means, never really have been, but I do watch the Super Bowl. And if you're into football watching the Super Bowl, well, our sponsor, Underdog Fantasy, actually has a pretty insane offer going into the Super Bowl. They've actually got a new customer special for anyone that signs up this week, where you essentially get a free pick -em for Patrick Mahomes higher than a half the total yards. That's right. If Mahomes gets just one passing yard, you win. And unlike their normal pick -ems where you can win 20x your money by getting all of your pick -ems right, they're actually taking it up a notch where you can now win 100 times your money for pick -ems in the Super Bowl. They're also doing $1 million in giveaways in addition to all this. And on top of that, they're also matching deposits up to $100 free money coming your way. All you have to do is sign up, use the promo code Bowl Central to get the special offer. As I've said before, it's also a great way to support the channel, and I really do appreciate it. Now, we already kind of knew that the Bulls weren't going to be making any moves when about two hours before the deadline, all the beat writers had arrived in Memphis and were talking to the guys at Shoot Around, and they revealed publicly that all the guys were there, most notably Damar, Drummond, Caruso, which means these guys aren't getting moved because if talks had really start progressing or if they were in fact traded, they would have been pulled from the floor to start getting ready to report to their next team. So even though we waited until 3 p.m. Eastern time, we more or less knew moves weren't going to be made a couple of hours in advance. Although I'm sure a lot of us felt nothing was going to happen well before that. Here's what gets me though, and I'll be very curious to see what kind of rationale or justification AK is going to use this go around when he addresses the media, which is going to be happening very soon. Possible by the time you're watching this, the presser has already happened. But I'm curious what they come up with here because we've kind of been putting up with all their BS excuses for a while now. But to have this happen three years in a row now, especially when, when the season started, AK said, we see what the fans are seeing. We're just as frustrated and we're going to do something about it. I'm paraphrasing a little, but more or less, that's what was said. Like clearly you saw a problem. You told us you were going to do something about it, and you're really going to sit there and tell me that because the team has looked marginally better since that bad 5-14 and 14 start, you expect us to believe that's all it took for you guys to change your minds and say, eh, we feel like what we have is good. I think we'll be all right after all. 21st in the league on offense, 15th on defense. Yeah, that's fine. Like, is this a joke? What are we doing here? Now, to be fair, in some other defense, don't make a trade just to make a trade. But based on what some of the other teams got in deals, how are you not able to get a solid return for some of these pieces that you have? I mean, it was reported by Woj that if the Bulls wanted to move Alex Crusoe, they could likely get two first round picks for him in a deal. I've continuously said I don't think it makes sense to move AC because he can fit with any team or timeline, whether you're rebuilding or contending, but multiple first round picks for Crusoe? Yeah, you have to take that was also reported previously that the Sixers were open to moving a first round pick for DeMar DeRozan. Expiring contract, 34 year old player, a first round pick? And instead the Sixers pivoted and went after Buddy Heald instead. 
Now, we don't know what offers were actually on the table. Sure, there is a world where maybe the offers weren't that good, so they decided to pass. But if that's the case, I would love for them to reveal some of these offers. They're never going to do that. But honestly, if the offers weren't that good, which, by the way, that's what they said at the last deadline, AK specifically said we could make trades, but at what cost? Like if they want to save their reputation to this fan base, it would almost be smart for them to say what the offers were for guys like DeMar, Caruso, Drummond, or even Zach Levine. Like if they were getting offers like a second round pick for Alex Caruso, then yeah, I would applaud them for not caving and just moving players just to make changes. Or that for DeMar, teams were offering meh players on bad contracts and a couple of seconds. Like, no, that doesn't make sense. Like if that was the case, then maybe all of us fans would shut up and stop complaining. But I find it very hard to believe that there just weren't better offers out there. You're not in a position to be making demands when you're a mid-team. You don't have a ton of leverage when teams know that this whole thing is likely going to implode and you can maybe get some of these players for when they have even less leverage or you can get them for free as free agents. Anyway, I just wanted to share my initial reaction to the Bulls standing pat at the deadline once again. I'll have some more thoughts and reactions to some of these trades around the league on my second channel, but I want to get to watching this presser to see what all the excuses are this time around from AK. Let me know your guys' thoughts on the Bulls' lack of moves here. Let me also know your thoughts on AK's comments if you've already watched the press conference by now. Let me know in the comments below. As always, be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.